young and I'm one of the regional ministers here in the South Wales Baptist Association. So when we think about this creator God that we're called to worship, this time of COVID-19 has allowed us to pause, to reflect on the vastness of who God is. We've been allowed time to reflect and ponder the limitations that we were putting on the vastness of God before. And now we're, we're discovering that creativity of God again as created beings. He's calling us to worship him, our creator. God's calling out that creativity in being. So we don't get too comfortable of how we do church but in worship him in different facets of who he is. I think we need to go back to scripture when we think about worship and look at how detached we've come from that. Eugene Peterson puts in Romans 12, here's what I want you to do. Take your everyday ordinary life and place it before God as an offering, your eating, walking, sleeping life and place it before God. That's true worship. We now have the opportunity to embrace that vastness of worship, move outside of the structures that we've inhabited for so long. Does that mean that we have to move our worship outside of the building um, in order to develop new structures or not have any structures at all? And I guess the answer is yes and no. Um, there, there's a beauty in having a building. There's a beauty of setting aside sacred space but also we don't need to allow that to limit us. And just as there is no limit on God and his grace, so there should be no limit in the way we experience that grace. So yes, let's take it out on the streets, let's embed it in homes, but let's take it to our workplace. Let's take it with us wherever we go and see that as sacrificial worship rather than something we do in a physical building. I guess that starts by acknowledging that God is already about doing his work and we just have to uh, see and seek where God is already moving. So much of what we've done in the past and do now is program led come to the building, come here. Programs are great, buildings are great, but there's something about the heart of God where, where his mission is being expressed in different ways. What's fascinating is in Iran, the church is growing massively. It's, it's rapidly growing and they don't have church buildings. That's something that we can all learn from. And, and here there's a church uh, in Cardiff where um, refugees just kind of end up because it's right in the centre of town. And lockdown's not been an issue for many of them. Obviously, there's been issues around housing and, and conditions. But in regard to expressing their faith and telling others, this is no biggie for them. They are just doing what they've always done and that's meeting together experiencing Jesus, the power of the Holy Spirit, worshipping God in his vastness, and then sharing other people. We can learn a lot from that. So mission kind of post-COVID out of our buildings would, would look like being in and out of each other's houses, would be releasing the gift of hospitality, honouring our guests over ourselves. It would force us back into a marketplace. It would force us back into structures that are known to us, that are familiar to us, that we would need to bring God into. What's fascinating in the early churches, they, they just went along to where they were normally going. They hung out with each other and there brought Jesus into it. As they were walking down the street, they saw a missional opportunity to proclaim the gospel in deed and word. 
For years, the church, the Baptists have prayed those powerful words, your kingdom come, your will be done. I believe God in mission is calling us to live a life worthy of God's kingdom. And that means that we uh, allow justice to roll out. So much of what we've done in mission is for those that are like us. And I believe God is calling us now to listen to him, to hear his voice, to hear his cry for justice for those on the sidelines. No more can we cross the road, but embrace his love for everyone. I believe God's uh, challenging me uh, in how we reimagine church and our life together. So much of church has been about a crowd, about getting people in, getting people together. And I believe God's asking us to reimagine what community is, uh, to go back to the biblical foundations of church. Church is not some ideal that we've made up, it's God ordained. Yet what we've developed over time isn't necessarily God's desire. One of the privileges I have as a regional minister is chatting to ministers. Uh, and over the past few months, um, just phoning and chatting to ministers, I've seen a real difference. I've heard a real difference in their voice. Before, when I used to meet them at ministers' gatherings, they used to tell me how many people would come to their church, what they were running as a programme. Uh, what that was like, you know, we had so many on a Sunday, so many come to Messy Church, that was the definition of their church and that seemed natural, it's what I did as well. But now, ministers are telling me people's names. I'm hearing much more, oh, so and so has now accessed this, I've been praying with this person. I'm noticing in the language we're using far more we're noticing people's names and not being fixated on numbers and programs. God calls us into deep community. We mix alongside people on a Sunday, but that's not enough. We need to go deeper, care about each other. A community built on a foundation of the knowledge of the grace of God sharing that common story and doing life together out of that context. I think this takes a lot of soul searching when we move away from the crowd. What was really interesting when COVID-19 happened and churches stopped, some people, some ministers, all of a sudden lost their identity because they couldn't meet with people. And I like to be liked. <laughs> I like people to tell me I'm doing a good job. And that's okay. But there's also that element that it shouldn't be the thing that we strive for. It shouldn't be the thing that validates us. And so for us as ministers, we have to delve deep into ourselves and get our affirmation and validation from God and not from a crowd. the beauty of our Baptist movement. I love the difference. I love the fact that we disagree. But my main aspiration is that in our differences, in our disagreements, we would be a movement that cheer each other on. Imagine what our movement would look like if we preferred each other's needs over our own. Imagine what our movement would look like if we allowed the Holy Spirit to disrupt us as individuals, our structures and our way of being. I believe God is already about doing it. He's shaking the system. He's shaking us as individuals, causing us to question. I think there's an element that we don't cheer each other on as we can because we're focused so much inwardly on our 
individual church and our individual congregation. We don't have the time or space to do that. But wouldn't it be amazing if we weren't focused on what we were doing as an individual church, but individual communities. And actually we share our best practices. We share the mistakes we've made. We do life together. Our independence is as marvelous as it is, is also something that cripples us in so many ways. We need to be better at resourcing each other, being with each other. My aspiration, my prayer, is that we would be a movement that is known for encouraging, a movement that is known for blessing others, encountering the difference in a good way, enabling God's Spirit to move amongst us, not worry about our reputation, not worry about getting it wrong, being the movement that hangs out with those on the sidelines of community. Imagine what that would be like if everyone looked at the Baptist movement and said, wow, don't they love each other in a really crazy way? That's what our, my aspiration for our movement is, that we would be the movement that cheers each other on despite the differences that we have.